Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching CVNet video series on binary search interview question series and this video is about what is the minimum swap required to convert a binary tree to a BST. So this is actually a continue video of my previous video which you will get uh, here maybe you will be seeing some pop up here and that is if there is an array and you have some elements in that they are not sorted then what is the minimum swap required to make this array sorted and yes this is greedy i'm asking for a minimum swap required to sort an array and this question is about a binary tree not the array but the solution is similar how i'll show you that so let's suppose you have this tree so this is binary tree right you have this these nodes here but if you ask how many swaps would be required to make it a binary search tree because this is not a binary search tree this is binary tree but not the binary search tree binary search tree is a sorted tree okay so this is not and sorted meaning it follows a rule if there is a node then its left hand side node would be less than this and this right hand side's node would be greater than this particular node so ultimately no matter how many nodes you have here in this children all these nodes would be less than this particular node so if you are lying in the left hand side then you are less than this and you actually follow this property for each and every node so that is b s t but this is not bst and the question is how many swaps would be required to convert this binary tree into a bst so as we are looking for the minimum swap meaning we are going for the greedy approach we are looking for the minimum swap so if you are performing a swap it should give you the maximum benefit okay so the maximum benefit you will get from here is like this you will swap these two so it would look something like this we have three four and two and five and one okay these two are sorted now four was actually greater than three so four is better at this location and three is better at this location so this swap is good but we have still one violation that this five is actually greater than three but it is at left hand side and this two here is less than three but at right hand side which is not correct so you can swap these two and it would look something like this we have this three four and five and we have two and one and if you see this this is actually a bst okay three is greater than two two is greater than one and three is less than four and five is greater than four and every, every everything is correct here so how many swaps did we do this is one swap and this is another swap so we needed two swaps right so notice this this question is for asking how many swaps would be required i'm not asking you to actually swap them i'm asking if i'm giving you a binary tree like this you have to tell me or return an integer number saying that two swaps would be required at minimum you don't have to swap this tree okay yeah now the whole idea is i have already explained how to find minimum swap in case of array which i explained yesterday you will see this video here somewhere okay you can see that video and you can get it i'll put the link in the description field also don't worry so as i was saying i have explained about the array what if you traverse this whole tree and store the elements in the array and you pass that array to the function what i explained yesterday cool right and for this thing to work you just need an array and that array we can construct by traversing in order in this tree and why in order you might be asking this question to yourself like why would i go for in order traversal to make an array i can go for pre order or post order but no the in order traversal has a very good property that if your tree look like this so this is your tree before bst this is just a binary tree and this is your bst okay this is sorted i'll show you this why you will traverse in order actually when you traverse in order you actually traverse on a pattern which would be like this so we have 1 5 4 3 2 it's just my way of understanding this thing okay 
I don't know, maybe the, you will find this somewhere or not. I'm not sure. So if you do this, if you just put these strings, you will find that this is one, two, three, four and five. This dude is already sorted. Okay. This is not sorted. And if you think this string thingy is not correct and you're confused with number like maybe uh, one and let's suppose we have this five <laughs> and uh, if we go here then this is three and if this is two and if I so this is also a binary search three because this follows all the properties but now if you put string you see that it is like this right so you see that two is coming before one but this is BST as I said then how this two is coming before one no it is not like that rather this whole tree is like this. So it is like uh, one here and then there is a very big string five and we have three and two like this. Okay. So this, this, this and this. So one, two, three and five. So this is sorted. I mean, this is my way of understanding all this. <laughs> I don't know maybe how, how much correct this is. Maybe it may be not a uh, correct hypothesis <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but this is what i understand and if you say that hey dude why you are putting this uh, string very long then i can say you that uh, actually uh, this two is greater than one right so anyway this two should be after one in the right hand side okay two cannot be in the left hand side you are just visualizing it because this string is getting big bigger here but as the BSC property says that you have two and one, then two would always be in the right hand side. So that's why I'm stretching this string and making it look like this. Because all of these elements are going to be in the right hand side. Just because I'm drawing it like this, this two cannot come in the left hand side of this one. Okay. I don't know how much helpful this was. So let's look at the code now. So this is piece of your code for in order. And we have this root here, we will pass this vector so that you can fill this vector and then later pass this vector into that function what I explained yesterday for array thing. And I strongly recommend if you have not watched that video, please after watching this video, go ahead and watch that. And wait, we, we are still not done. So this is traditional way of uh, traversing in order, right? In order meaning in between these two left and right call, you will do your operation. Meaning you, you, you was printing this or you was just making the list. doesn't matter, but this is in order operation. You, whatever operation you wanted to do, you're doing in between these two. If this is before this, I mean like this, then this is pre-order. If this is after this, then this is post order post meaning it is after left and right in meaning it is in between left and right calls. And if it is before meaning it is pre order traversal. So this is actually your code. This is in order traversal. And if you think that I'm unnecessarily passing this vector, which is getting passed again and again, but mind it, it is a reference here. So it is just the reference passing, not the actual vector object passing. So, I mean, there is no copy here because it is a reference. <laughs> and if you think that maybe compiler would unnecessarily pass this argument again and again, I bet Compiler is really smart enough to identify that, okay, I am passing this again and again with the reference. So it can optimize this thing and make it some sort of a global thingy for this. And it won't pass this again and again. I mean, I just th think like that, maybe it should do, but if it is not doing like that, you can help yourself. You can have a class, maybe sample and you just move your whole code into this class. Okay. We have public here. Now you can have maybe vector of integer vec and just remove all this. That's it. You don't have to do anything. Okay. Now I will just get rid of all this thing. And from main, you can just call sample s as dot in order. And you just pass your root from here. That's it. This guy would keep this vector available for you and later after this call, you can make some s dot array call what I explained yesterday and you can get your work done. And there you can use this particular vector inside that array call 
which you are about to see in the next video. So I hope you understood this whole concept. So thanks for watching guys. Bye bye. Take care. And yeah, don't forget to watch that video, which is maybe showing here right now, or you will find that link in the description. No worries.